This scene was created using 3D scanned assets that I took using the updated Kiri engine. Now these models here will be available on my Patreon, so go check that out in the link in the description. Now for one of these shots, I did find a nice location in the car park. Uh, it looked pretty good, so let's, uh, let's go ahead and capture it. And this is where I opened up Kiri Engine, took about 200 photos of the location, making sure kind of I rotate all the way around, trying to get every facet of the groove of the ground. And then from here, upload, let it go. Then I went ahead, jumped over onto the website, let's log in. And the cool thing is, is I use my phone for that one, but also you can upload any photos from a camera if you wanted to. Sick! So jumping over to my models, we can see all the wonderful models that I have taken. Um, I think it might have been this one. And um, I think it is. But you can see how good, like, the detail is on this. And we'll jump over into Blender in a sec. Uh, actually, let's just jump over there now. So as you can see, these assets look really, really nice. I've done a little bit of post-processing on these, but let's go from scratch. I'm gonna go File, Import, Import, um, OBJ. Over here is the one that we're looking at. So this is the very raw data. If I go into wireframe mode, you can just see how dense the mesh is. Now, what I normally like to do is go to Add Modifier and go Decimate. At the moment, we can see there's 2.6 million faces. I normally go 0.1 on the decimate, so really bring it back. And you can see how much the mesh has condensed. Condensed? Anyway, it's on 262,000 faces now. With the modifier selected, I'm gonna press Control A to apply that modifier. And then what I do is go tab into edit mode. Let's just go into front top view, sorry. Um, I will press C to bring up my selection tool. And then I kind of just swing around the edge like so, just to clean up the mesh. Delete faces. I will select the main mesh now. Press Control L to select everything that is linked. And we can see that we've got some black spot. This is kind of mesh that's just hanging in midair. I'll press Control I to invert my selection. Delete verses. Now when we go into material mode, we can see that we've got a wonderful mesh. Now the other things that I do as well is let's try and just get it as flat as possible. G to Z, there we go, something like that. And then I'll Alt left click all the way so that we get the whole edge. Make sure we've got proportional editing turned on and then I can press G, Z and bring that down ever so slightly. And we can increase that fall off. And the point of that is, is when we go Shift D and we kind of want these objects to mesh a little bit, you can see how we're increasing the, um, how much we can use. And there we go, like we're making valleys and it's, you know, beautiful. However, I'm assuming you want to see what that animation looks like, what the actual scene looks like. So let's jump over into that. And as you can see, it is just a whole bunch of assets that I've kind of scaled and moved and so on and so forth. Like this one here, this is what that cliff face looks like. I'm actually control Z, shift D. <laughs> I'm gonna press Alt R and Alt S, Alt S to change the scaling. And you can see what that rock looks like now. If we have a look, go into material mode, just like so. This is what all the scans look like. Um, all mingled together. And this is kind of like the cave system as well. You don't really notice it, but obviously that's because of the motion blur. But even if I were to go into rendered view and you would have seen some of these photos on Instagram, uh, where is the ship? There it is, probably about there. Like, I mean, I really like how this scene turned out and the assets are absolutely gorgeous. And I mean, I just did all this just straight off the iPhone. Now with the export function, you can just have a look here. We can see all the images that we've taken and obviously we can delete any ones that are kind of no good. We can choose how many faces we want, what's the quality of the texture and what kind of format we're gonna export. Now I normally just pick OBJ just because that's just what I use. But on the website, we've actually got more features that we can work with. So for instance, if I want to change the texture a little bit, I can click on texture toning and then we can start adjusting how bright these textures are, the contrast and all that kind of stuff. I could have made it a bit more of an alien planet. Ah, oh, yeah, nice. I probably should have done that. <laughs> 
But for the fact is, is you can edit these textures within Kiri Engine. Actually, let's turn on auto correction. Interesting. This is obviously going to save you a lot of time. Now you can also export this as a USDZ. I'm pretty sure. I saw somewhere. Kiri Engine has improved quite a bit in recent times, so I really recommend checking them out. Um, works on both iPhone and Android, and if you have a SLR or something and you want to use that camera, go for gold, mate. Go for gold.